Uh, Patrick, Patrick CC, he will cure me of my, of my, uh, of, bro, my hand, I feel it. Uh, when comedians cause chaos at award shows, Ricky, Ricky Gervais, I, I forgot how to say his name. I forgot what his name was, but this dude is absolutely goaded. He's absolutely goaded on the mic when he when he when he's in front of the when he's in front of those like when he's in front of the celebrities, bro. I love I literally remember just binging all his shit. Comedians notoriously hate award shows and celebrities hate when comedians host them because the comedians can't resist the opportunity to Because they tell the truth on stage and belittle celebrities during their night of highest honor. But the fans love these spectacles because we get to sit back and watch the chaos. Relax, I'm gonna try and be nice. Your global megastars with amazing talent, most of you. A few of you just married we all need well. To recover. <laughs> Watch this. You know who you are. <laughs> We, we all do. We all do. Today we are going to take a look at some of the funniest, most savage, and painfully awkward moments that have come from comedians. Oh no, not not awkward. I thought we were just gonna do funny stuff, man. Awkward. Award shows, starting with Jerry Seinfeld, who exposed these ceremonies for what they truly are. Uh -oh. legend Jerry Seinfeld bluntly explained his hatred for award shows while he accepted the Comedian Award presented by HBO in 2007. You don't give awards to comedians. <laughs> First of all, comedians don't need awards. Awards are for people that are looking for work. We're not looking for work. Jerry opens with an interesting point. Comedians will not sell more tickets to their stand-up performances based on some pretentious award True. because being funny is subjective. True. However, in cinema, receiving an accolade will make producers and directors more interested in hiring an award-winning yeah, actor in future that's, films that's... for obvious creative and marketing reasons. You know, I don't know why we're so fascinated with actors in this culture. They haven't got a thought in their stupid bedhead hairdo mini brains. Why? We must honor this man. Why? He pretended to be Bob Johnson. <laughs> Playing dress up and pretend is not genius, ladies and gentlemen. Chill, no. not too much, bro. Chill, man. Not genius. <clears throat> Roll the cameras, put on these clothes, stand there, ready? Say what we told you to say. <laughs> Fantastic. He did it. Give this man a huge golden trophy. He's a goddamn genius. As an actor himself, I'm sure Jerry is just joking here. However, comedian. Yo, nigga said it's the B from B movie. <laughs> it's the B from B movie. Yo, that's insane. Comedians are often writers, directors, producers, and performers of their own material. Ironically, it kind of makes them more deserving of these esteemed awards. And secondly, and even more important, is um, your whole career as a comedian is about making fun of pretentious, high-minded... Now, it's actually crazy that I feel like in like, all the entertainment stuff, stand-up is... like... Probably like the only profession where you and only you as a person, you you have to write your own shit. Like you could probably get like suggestions or like like here like uh probably somebody could like do something. For, I don't know. I feel like more if comedians get the most shit for not actually writing their own shit, whether rather than anything else like even rappers is just like bro is like people ghost write all the, like that's what it is rappers musician uh singers like people write their shit for them all the time but it's like if you can't really you can get a joke given to you but it's like it's probably not gonna be performed the right way or like the way that you know i don't know it's i feel like that's the job where you have to actually do your own shit it has to be your own work because it's your life stories most of the time when people talk about damn i'm kind of, I'm trying to think what else is like like that self-congratulatory bs events like this one <laughs> the whole feeling in this room of reverence and honoring 
is the exact opposite of everything I have wanted my life to be about. Now, him clearly expressing disdain for these ceremonies might come as a surprise to you, but comedians before and after him have felt the exact same hatred, like Don Rickles, who paved the way for comedians after him to unapologetically say what's on their mind. Mm -hmm. I am so as excited you to get this cockamamie award. While you may think it's disrespectful to just make fun of an award you're being honored for, it's hard to take it seriously when there are so many award shows that you can't even keep track of them. You have the Golden Globes. Uh, where's the Nickelodeon award? The Emmys, the Grammys, Directors Guild of America Awards, -E the BAFTA Awards. He slays Tom Cruise because he pretends to be someone else. Uh, That's crazy. Tom Cruise actually would never be me. Tom Cruise actually does his own stunts. Okay, so we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna take that disrespect. Okay, he literally puts his body on the line for the films that he's that he's shooting for. So you're gonna watch your mouth and you're gonna stop it right there. That's where I'm gonna stop that. Okay. Screen. All these other guys, they get stuntmen. Shout out to the stuntmen. That's who you should be thanking, bro. Actors Guild Awards, Producers Guild of America Awards, Writers Guild of America Awards, the Oscars, BET MTV Awards. Video Music You're Awards, racist. BET Awards, oh, American God. Music Awards, and that's not even all of them. These people spend more time celebrating than they do creating. I get this wonderful TV Land Award, and uh, <laughs> whoever designed it is a Tom Cruise host an awards show. What, Tom hasn't? Why would he host an awards show? Unless it was like. An award show for like, what are you asking? You're just trying to start shit, bro. Shut up. Moron. Now, I'm sure you all know the typical structure of these events. One person will be the host of the entire night, but different celebrities will take the stage to present each award. Usually, these celebs read their lines off teleprompters, and often they are reading bad jokes that someone else wrote. That, bros, that's what I'm talking about. Like, as a stand up comedian, if you go, because like, you can always see it, if you go up there and you're reading a teleprompter while you're doing your whole set, Niggas is not going to be engaged with, like, or think that shit's really funny because it doesn't seem genuine. You're reading off the goddamn teleprompter, bro. I feel like that's a perfect ex example of, like, why why comedians, like, that's got to be, like, one of the hardest, hardest things. Because it has to be you and genuinely you. And, you know, if you bomb a set, you have to go rework your work, bro. With terrible delivery. We're here to present the VMA to the best group. And we love everything that has to do with groups. Yeah, group therapy, group hugs, groupies. Very exciting for both of us because we're both nominated. Uh, actually, James, I'm not nominated tonight. Oh, come on, Ann, don't be so modest. <laughs> no, I'm not modest. I'm just not nominated. It used to be, you get naked, you get nominated. <laughs> not anymore. Not anymore which made Don's subtle jab about reading from the teleprompter that much funnier. Let's read these funny lines they wrote for us. Okay. Don then goes on to sarcastically laugh at the jokes. First, it's a thrill to be matched up at the Emmy Awards with Mr. Warp himself, Don Rickles. The world hasn't seen a pairing like this since John McCain and Sarah Palin. <laughs> 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 It's the deep layers of irony that make Don's delivery so good. These celebrities know award shows are pompous. They also know Don isn't afraid to call them out on their bullshit. Yet even before he can get the jokes out, they already laugh and applaud the comic legend. But don't you dare try to interrupt one of his punchlines. Oh, Julia Roberts, you live next to me at the beach, you know that. Tom Cruise is a glorified stuntman, uneven teeth, Scientologist oh looking at. I bet you 10k you can't oh find a decent oh clip God, of Tom oh Cruise's oh God, oh acting oh without his stunting. Oh. Shame. Wait, what? Shame. Okay, see? No, see? I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to lead me. I see what you're trying to do. I see what you're trying to do. Hold on. I already, I already see what you're trying to do. You're trying to lead me off a path. You already, you're trying to lead me off a path, but I'm not finna, I'm not finna, uh, get distracted now you're probably thinking oh my god he's typing he's typing a scene uh no i'm uh i'm looking for a scene <clears throat> he did he remember remember he did it he did it to himself. I bet you never even heard of this movie, you casual. How much for? Shut up! Shut up! Ow! Don't I? Ah. Comedians get jokes written for them often. Ah. 
Paul Mooney wrote for Pryor. Shit, Chris Rock got his shit smacked across global television because of a G.I. Jane joke somebody else wrote for him. <laughs> shit, well, that was an LC. award show. I, but that's the thing. Like, I feel like they do. Uh, I, I, that's why. That's why I was trying to figure out. Like, there are people who can like pitch you things, but it's like, bro, writing a full like people write full sets and shit. I don't know, man. Damn, maybe maybe they don't count, and maybe they do get written their shit written though. I, I don't fucking know, man. I don't know, bro. One kiss. <laughs> That smile is going to be the end of me. <laughs> this is acting. What this... happens when your friend calls you tomorrow? He just met you a few hours before me. He'd do the same. I see that friendship is important to you. It is. It is. And as his best friend, I also know that he's trying to finish a novel about inadequacy and rejection. Mm. So the longer that I stay, the better it is for his career. Mm. Mm. Your career is the one I'd worry about. This is acting. This is Riz. This is Aura. All in one video. All in one video. Shut the fuck up. 2001. Sorry. That's crazy. I was just about to come out of my mother's meat wallet. Then this movie came out. Could never be TC. Oh my God. Did you just oh say meat wallet? King Tom Cruise. Where do I even start? Did you just did you just say meat wallet? Look how he holds this emotion. Sorry. This is good. No, no, you're more right than you even know. You guys didn't even see. I like used to be one of those guys that just uh, snowboarding through his life. No focus whatsoever. When did you change? About five minutes ago. Every passing minute is another chance to turn it all around. Now, chat. That's what I call W Wiz. This acting is drier than Nikki's pussy. Okay. Try this on for size. How about you try this on for size? Look at the passion. Yes, voluptuous, succulent meat wallets. Oh. Hatchet wound, slit, beef curtains. Did you just say, did you just refer to your mom's vagina as succulent meat cushions? Okay, look, look, last, look, 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 this, this is... His son is losing it. About to go to war, my nigga, with aliens? Oh, no, you're gonna die. He, listen, listen to his delivery. You will die if you go in that direction. There is nothing living in that direction. Watch I this. know you got heated watching this scene. Watch this.
Do you hear the pain behind that yell? He should have got an Emmy for this or an Oscar WT, or whatever the fuck. I felt like I was right there with him. I'm saying, bro, he's just, he's just amazing, bro. <laughs> Thanks for all the visits. Uh, I'm Twines. Oh, Julia Roberts, you live next to me at the beach. You know that. <laughs> Thanks for all the visits. Anyway, uh, I'm living about two blocks from you. The broad never shows up. Come by and say hello. <laughs> Closer than two blocks. <laughs> you have no lines, Julia. Just nod. <laughs> Anyway, uh. And even if the entire ceremony is dedicated to one person, like when Martin Scorsese received a tribute for the AFI Life Achievement Award, Don Rickles will humble them. Marty, you are the most annoying director I ever had. In <laughs> Little guy, he's the kind of guy in prison was the squealer all the time. <laughs> Pulling on your pants like going, let's do it again. Marty, when we see all the films you did, None of them were great. <laughs> wait, wait. This is the saddest death in all of animated history, and you would definitely agree. You lost me at anime. When we see all the films you did, none of them were great. <laughs> but if you Thanks feel bad for, for support, Martin, but don't make me copyright my shit, champ. Don't worry, Clint Eastwood got the same treatment the previous year. Clint, I say it. Nobody else has said it, and I say it from my heart. You're a lousy actor. <laughs> Yo, what the <laughs> This is why you can never get too comfortable at these gatherings. Like when oh. David Mann was presenting at the Neighborhood Awards and Lavelle Crawford caught a stray fat joke. Oh, oh my gosh. I remember this shit. Joke. Anybody got some chicken, an extra piece of chicken? <laughs> Lavelle, I know you got it. <laughs> nah, show the whole thing. Hey, take your jacket off and cover that side of the audience up. This nigga was on a roll. I think we can all agree that the best moment. Nah, 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 chat. Y'all gotta see this shit. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. What was that? He said animated? I okay, said animated, man. not anime. Oh, my fault, my fault, my fault. Um, It's just somehow, the, uh, the only reason is, because I seen someone say, damn, he don't fuck with anime. The only reason is, there's some people who always somehow try to make it into anime like make the stream delve into anime shit and then it and then it's gonna get to yo you have to check out this fight it's peak it's always gonna end up getting there that's why i just try to stay away from it bro um fuck what was the uh no bro wait what was his name oh my god i forgot i forgot the, the dude's name <laughs> oh my gosh, that shit was so funny. Bro. Can't TC find it. such a great oh, actor. He got us all overlooking that he literally worships a science fiction book that was repurposed as a religion for tax purposes. All TC got to do is jump off a plane and we write back like a man, freedom of religion dog. Cry about it, bro. Since we're almost kind of reacting to anime, can you just real quick react to? Just kidding. How about how about this, bruh? A rapper kills somebody. Who cares? They just dropped a new single. The shit's heat. <laughs> the shit's heat, bruh. We have three talented actors here. One stars in the upcoming action film Falcon Rising. She is there's, from the new ABC. There's still niggas to this day unironically saying free take. Hey. On God. ABC sitcom Blackfish and the man known as Mr. Brown Trace Come on get what Hello Hello What What I said hello Oh there we go Let I got church say amen I think that was music playing Church say amen again Now it's time to have church thing all that cussing Turn your Bibles to for <laughs> <laughs> This is what Dave Chappelle was doing, just talking. 
Donna McClurk, and I'm not gonna go to hell because I was dancing. <laughs> Donna just started praying for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh Lord Jesus. <laughs> okay, uh, do the award. Steve? Yes. I, I like your hands. Thank you. I liked your dancing. Like a lion up in this piece. Just, just <laughs> rawr. Just rawr. Steve? Yes. Steve, the show is called Blackish, not Blackfish. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm so grateful that you said the beginning, right? <laughs> you won't be back next year. No, I will. Oh. Oh. We're here to present the award for. Come on. Tell you Chat, wasn't it him where he completely announced the wrong name or something? And it was a whole meme where he was like, the name on the card said. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> the name, I was given a card, the name on the card. Oh my gosh, that was bad. Come <laughs> back, come back, come back, baby. Baby, put your shoes back on. They hurt, Steve, put, put, they're put, so cute. I, oh. There you go. Okay. Steve, I'm you sorry. know, no, no, Steve. Look, did you guys go and see Steve's talk today? It was amazing. This is so ghetto. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, oh, baby. That's okay. They, but they had blackfish. Instagram on Reels tonight. It's been over 7,000 minutes since the last Ew, one. Oh, we you're thirsty. The chat are craving for Reels, please. Probably like Wednesday. Probably like Wednesday or something. It's and hilarious, now, honestly. Now, but, see, but baby, now, now they tried to switch it and put black, then dash, I-S on it. See, they just did that I know change. they've been doing this to you all night, Steve. Well, you know what it is. I, don't, I make my money telling jokes, so I, don't, I can't read that good. I went to public school. So. <laughs> my best high school ain't up here. I can promise you that. <laughs> they ain't taught us a damn Manfie, thing. My nigga take K and Melly Dog. They ain't do none, niggas die every day, B. Also, Tracy Ellis Ross ass so fucking juicy dog I could lose a quarter in that bitch and wouldn't miss it. What the fuck does that even mean? Like, what did you just say? What the fuck did you just say? School I went to, they were just great. And a nigga gonna say facts in the chat. Like, what? I could lose a quarter in that bitch and I wouldn't miss it? Where do you even find th that somebody said some shit like that? Like, what are you watching where people are talking like that? Graduate nurse just. I could lose a quarter in that bitch, I wouldn't miss it. <laughs> like, <laughs> that sounds like something Drewski say randomly as a joke. Get our ass out of there. <laughs> My high school ain't up here, so I'm sorry. Hey, Amen. Okay. <clears throat> your, high school, your high school ain't on here either, so hush. <laughs> Why do people just call out? We can't hear you and we not un Never mind, go ahead. Do the high school stuff so I get frustrated. I want to sing. <clears throat> no, I'm just <laughs> This is so ghetto. <laughs> Okay, Tracy, on your new show, Black-ish. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, sexy. Come on, let him have it. Let him have it. I'm gonna put on your show, Black-ish. <laughs> Change my damn voice. Is it true you played the mother of a boy in high school? Uh, it, yeah. that, that is right. And things sure are different from when we were in high school. Why well, sound like you talking in a film? <laughs> All they gotta do is read the fucking lines on the teleprompter, bro. All they gotta do is read the lines off the teleprompter. That's all you gotta do, bro. <laughs> like your voice is permanently chopped and screwed. <laughs> Come on, do the nomination so I can go. I'm hot. Anybody got some chicken, an extra piece of chicken? Lavelle, I know you got some. <laughs> You was messing with my boy Kirk Franklin, and that's my homeboy. <laughs> hey, take your jacket off and cover that side of the audience up. 
Oh my god, the roar. The fucking roar from the audience, bruh. Some sound person oh. got a raise that day. Oh. We gotta finish the show. I can't be up here with you all night with this Christmas bow tie on. Let's go. Well, we both in the Christmas spirit, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> One more outfit up here with Santa Claus coming. <laughs> yeah, rub it. Rub it, because Mr. Brown didn't pay you enough to get this jacket. Yo, I bet you had to pay extra. <laughs> you should have paid extra for that little ass shirt you got on. How you 700 pounds wear a size two shoe? Yo, welcome. I see, I see why Kirk Franklin, your friend, both of y'all like little outfits. They should call y'all boys to men. I'm done. <laughs> Yo! The number 10 is brought to you by. Nah, they bodied that, bro. I'm sorry, Steve. Now I'm not gonna be able to come back. <laughs> that, see, that's, that's what, uh, that's what Will Smith and Chris Rock should have just done, bro. I ain't gonna lie, Will Smith would have lost that though, cause Chris Rock just off the dome, just just spitting out jokes is rapid fire. You're done. <laughs> You're done, buddy. Welcome to the hoodies. I told y'all. I told you. I told but it's like when shit like this happens, I feel like, I mean, then again, award shows do need structure otherwise that shit would be like five hours long and don't nobody want to don't nobody want to see that shit don't nobody want to watch all that shit but bro I feel they like went off so hard they just had the whole crowd just standing up and walking around like the show was over but i feel like if more shows just had like little moments like this i don't know i don't know it just it makes it more or less like there's Normal. four minutes left and i'm hoping and praying tracy big beautiful booty get back on stage dog I'm trying to levitate it. All right, all right, all right. Let's see. Moments come from the host directly sniping one of the members of the audience. It's a big year for Jack. He also got in a hot tub with Kathy Bates. But hey, who hasn't? One of the most savage roasts came from Amy Poehler. They, them two, are so good together. Oh my gosh, their chemistry on stage, absolutely hilarious at the 2013 Golden Globes. She introduced director Catherine Bigelow, who was previously married to famous director James Cameron. Catherine was nominated for Best Director for the film Zero Dark Thirty, which received a ton of criticism for glorifying CIA torture in the film. I haven't really been following the controversy over Zero Dark Thirty, but when it comes to torture, I trust the lady who spent three years married to James Cameron. <laughs> Ha <laughs> 
<laughs> Amy has built herself a reputation for kind of being a roast master. Yeah, she's, yes, she's, Matt Damon is here for behind the candle. And it's the fact that she just sit there and smile right after, bro. Look at me dead in the eyes. I've neglected my kids so much because there has been no reels. Please Yo, feed us so I can feed we them. We did one. Look at chat there, hunger little we babies. Done, we have done one episode of this real shit and you're begging for like, bro, middle of the week. Like later, it's Monday, dude. It's Monday, man. Labra, where are you, Matt? <laughs> Matt, on any other night in any other room, you would be a big deal. But tonight, and don't take this the wrong way, you're basically a garbage person. <laughs> Not, oh, and not Matt Damon. I love Matt Damon. Tina Fey is damn good, too. Gravity is nominated for Best Film. It's the story of how George Clooney would rather float away into space and die than spend one more minute with a woman his own age. But sometimes making... <gasps> Daddy! jokes about celebrities doesn't always go over well like the time sarah silverman made fun of britney spears's children at the 2000 oh shit oh no oh, 2007 vmas but have you seen britney's kids oh my god they are the most adorable mistakes you will ever see they are so cute they're they're as cute as the hairless vagina they came out of. I'm, what? I'm serious, they're this cute, you guys. The audience didn't think this joke was very funny, but this was back in 2007 when the internet didn't have a full force grip on everyone's lives. Oh. So nobody was tweeting their outrage against Sarah. <laughs> True. That was not the case for Bill Burr, who made a bunch of jokes at the 2021 Grammys pre-show that caused uproar online. <laughs> Bill Burr! We need people, we, we, I'm, I'm so glad there's still people that remain like this and, and such like, you know, just don't give a fuck. Twitter, oh, Twitter, what, what are they gonna do? Tweet about me? Where are they gonna, they're, they're gonna tweet at me and, and then it's gonna hurt my feelings? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Shout out to Bill Burr, man. After a beautiful piano solo from Igor Levitt, Bill was brought on stage and said this. How are you? Was I the only one who wanted to kill himself during that piano solo? What the fuck? What warranted this? What the what did the piano guy do? After a beautiful piano solo from- Nah, there's gotta be something to happen backstage, bro. You just came out and said that? Igor Levitt, Bill was brought on stage and said this. How are you? Was I the only one who wanted to kill himself during that piano solo? Critics exploded online. Wait, that's it? That's it? Scolding Bill for making such a distasteful joke during a night of honor and praise. Oh Little did critics know, it was only going to get worse. Bill immediately followed up by making fun of the Grammys pre-show as he thought he was going to be hosting the actual Grammys, only for him to show up to an empty Hollywood set presenting awards to a handful of producers and a few thousand people watching on the internet. What? I bought a suit for this! I thought I was gonna be on TV! I'm such a moron! I am losing so much money right now. For some reason, they had Bill, a white man from Boston with absolutely no musical talent or knowledge, present all of the Latin music awards and nominees. All right. Hey, how many uh, feminists are like going nuts? So how, why is this cis white male doing all this Latino stuff? And he unsurprisingly butchered just about every name. I can't say this name. Natalie, Natalie, what? All right. Uh, <laughs> and the winner, uh, the Grammy goes to Natalia Lafourcade. <laughs> and the Grammy goes to Gustavo Dudamel, conducting the Los Angeles Philharmonic. I will be accepting the Grammy on behalf of Gustavo Dudamel. Congratulations. Crush that one. And the Grammy goes to <laughs> Crush that Frederick one. Ballantyne. 
Uh, Angel Blue, Dead Sea Graves. Because of people's outrage, some comedians don't- They hold him, bro. They hold him, bro. Don't think it's worth it to host anymore. Like Kevin Hart, who decided to drop out of hosting the Academy Awards after he was attacked on Twitter for his unsavory humor. Kevin Hart was announced to be the host of the 2019 Oscars, and immediately Twitter erupted, where detractors posted a series of old homophobic- Oh my gosh, and this is where Twitter begins to like make shit so ass. Like why why do we care? Why do we care, bruh? Oh my god. And it's just the fact that people just went on Twitter, typed gay and Kevin Hart Burr to make jokes in an empty room got fired that day. Yeah, that's ab absolutely insane. It's like it's like everything revolves just around what people say on Twitter, bro tweets. Nearly all of them were just really bad jokes that seem relatively menial. However, one stood out more than most. Kevin Hart tweeted, Yo, if my son comes home and tries to play with my daughter's dollhouse, I'm going to break it over his head and say in my voice, Stop, that's gay. Critics also resurfaced an old joke from his iconic 2010 comedy special, Seriously Funny. I'm gonna tell you guys one of my biggest- Oh my gosh, no way you're getting, like, mad at a joke at, at, at a comedian special that literally consists of jokes. Like, okay, if I if I wanted to go, like, bread, uh, dead brain, uh, and, and try to, you know, link things and, and, and try to understand. Okay, Twitter. Okay, he's just on Twitter saying this stuff. That's kind of weird. Oh my God, why would he say it on Twitter though? Like, he didn't have to do that. Where's the stand up on Twitter? Where is the jet? Whatever, okay? Ma okay, th there. But a s actual set? You're you're mad at what he, a joke that he said on his actual set where jokes are intended to be made. His job. What? Fears. One of my biggest fears is my son growing up and being gay. Hey, stop! That's gay. It's quick. Kevin had apologized for these previous. Why are you a yo? Damn, I. Cat Williams was right. I didn't want to believe it. I love Kevin Hart, man. I love Kevin Hart, man. But you apologize, dude. And I know there's going to be people be like, that's mature of him. Why are you getting mad? Like, are you defending homophobia, whatever? I'm defending the art of comedy. So that's first and foremost what I'm always going to be about, bro. That's why whenever I say a joke, I don't ever clarify. Like, I I'm not going to clarify to people that think it's for real that I was just joking. I'm going to let you think that. Oh, my gosh. This is insane. Words in 2012. In 2015. In fact, there's times where I say a joke and I'd be like, I'm just joking. And then literally right after, be like, kind of, no, I'm serious. <laughs> just, just, just to like fuck with people sometimes. <laughs> it's fun to just fuck with people sometimes. I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. No, I'm serious. It's just fun to do because it's just like right there, and they're just like, wait, what? What the fuck? He also addressed using gay jokes in his film Get Hard. Did you think this is mildly mean spirited, or at the very least, a little bit dated? I said to myself, this is funny. Okay. Uh, and at the end of the day, funny is funny regardless of what area it's coming from. Within 48 hours- Should have kept that same energy, bro. Hours of the host announcement, Kevin claims he was given an ultimatum. I was given an ultimatum. Kevin, apologize, but we're gonna have to find another host. So he- Wow. Wait. He ultimately decided to step down. Kevin did not host the Oscars and said recently in- But he apologized. Wait, but did, did he just apologize? 2024 that he would never consider it ever again. Those gigs aren't good gigs for comics. It's no shot to the Oscars, no shot to the Globes or anything else. Those just aren't comedy friendly environments anymore. Many people like- Oh, different apology. Oh, probably for the tweets. Kevin believe that comedy is- I don't know, this, this is just stupid. Under a microscope these days. But it isn't even just everyday people online that get offended. Sometimes it's the A-list stars who, even though they are in the entertainment industry themselves, get offended. Like I've noticed that Tom Hanks always has a sour look on his face. Anyone in the audience not laughing is terrified of being next. One A-lister who did not like being the butt of the joke was- Jada Pinkett Smith, and her husband's reaction stamped one of the craziest award show moments of all time. Uh. During the 2022 Oscars, Chris Rock was presenting the award for Best Documentary Feature. Naturally, he opened with some jokes. You know who's got the hardest job tonight? Javier Bardem and his wife are both nominated. 
Now, if she loses, he can't win. <laughs> he is praying that Will Smith wins. Like, please. Everything was going great until he transitioned to a joke about Jada Pinkett. Now now, Chris had a joke during the 2016 Oscars about Jada that the crowd loved. Jada's going to boycott the Oscars. Jada boycotting the Oscars is like me boycotting Rihanna's panties. <laughs> I wasn't invited. Ironically, this joke was way harsher than the one he was about to Yeah, I feel like this is, this is way crazier. Well, I guess talking about her hair condition is, is crazy, but I just, bro, it's just like... I just wish Will Smith didn't do what he did, bro. Deliver. Chris made a joke about Jada, who has spoken openly about having alopecia, a hair loss condition. Chris compared Jada to Lieutenant Jordan O'Neill, the star of G.I. Jane, notorious for her short buzz cut. He either didn't know about her condition or knew and still thought it was funny, bro. He either knew about her condition, he either didn't know about her condition or knew, but didn't give a fuck because the joke, he wanted to say the joke, bro. But hairstyle. Based on Jada's expression, she did not like the joke. Will, on the other hand, was laughing. It's unclear if he was trying to mask his anger by laughing or if he genuinely thought the joke was funny. But I mean, he was probably looking him right in the face when he said the joke, and then Will Smith was just hit a hit a. <laughs> All right. And the camera cuts back to Chris, and we can see. Will oh, oh no no! He, why did you do this, bro? Why did you do this? This is when it's like, this is when the timelines could have, like. We could have changed everything, but no, this is the timeline we're living we're living in. Bill storming the stage until he ultimately smacks Chris in the face. Damn, that shit was so quick too. Oh god damn. He can't. sits back in his seat. I literally can't watch. It's like so cringe. Like and yells at Chris, keep my wife's name out of your mouth. The like deaf I, like I get uncomfortable. Silence in the room permeated when the audience realized this was not scripted, and Chris tried to make sense of what just happened. This encounter made comedians hate award shows even more because Will faced zero repercussions for his actions. He was not kicked out, he was not spoken to by the show organizers. Yeah, what, what did Dave Chappelle say? <laughs> what did Dave Chappelle say? He said what made him so mad wasn't the smack. It was that afterwards, Will Smith sat down and enjoyed the rest of the show. <laughs> like, what the fuck? In fact, he won his first Oscar for Best Actor later and on. And he in won the an evening. Oscar! He gave a five minute speech rambling and crying about how God is calling him to love people and to protect people. He received a standing ovation with Hollywood actors crying in support of him. The stand. Mm. And this is coming from someone who absolutely loves Will Smith. This was just not, this is not good, bro. This was not, a, this was just not a good look at all, man. Ending ovation made me realize how detached Hollywood is from reality. The slap incident is likely why we got the extremely safe and not edgy Jimmy Kimmel to host the awards for the next two years. And guess what? Nobody talked about the fucking show. <laughs> Nobody talked about this show This is 100% corny, but if we talking about standing on business, Will got it. That's a real nigga. I mean... Yeah, I mean, like, he's defending his wife after, like, she's got a, con it's a condition, so it's like, it is a condition, but it's like, at the same time, just make it, like, just look, like, just don't laugh, maybe just don't laugh and just make a straight face and be like, nah, that one was, like, in poor taste, bro, but it kind of just looks bad on you when you slap a comedian for being a comedian, you know, it would be different if it was some random nigga on the street, <laughs> if it was some random nigga on the street just, like, it's just like, what the fuck was that about? But I mean, it's Chris Rock and I'm pretty sure y'all were like cool or knew each Did other. Did you see this joke Theo Von made during a hair loss sponsor oh, ad? That shit sucks, bro. And they were about as funny as you could imagine. Christopher is joined by his longtime collaborator, Killian Murphy, who is just wonderful. Killian is... Interesting fact about his name, it's pronounced Killian when he does drama, when he does comedy, it's silly ass. Actually, I... Imagine getting smacked and seeing a standing ovations. Yo. Imagine going from Chris Rock to it type of jokes to that. Like, what the fuck? It, and when he's doing comedy, instead of Killian, it's Cillian? He couldn't have wrote that himself. He's gotta be, he's funnier than that, come on. I take that back. The reason why we'll never get a good comedian to host an award show again is not because of Will Smith. It's because of Ricky Gervais. Ah, now you want to talk about the man, NGL the myth, 
that the slap legend? would have been a funny Aspondox episode. You want to talk about the man, the myth, the legend? Oh, here we go. Face, who unleashed an onslaught of savage roasts and jokes towards the guests, sponsors, and even the networks who host these events. Ricky exposed Hollywood so badly at the 2020 Golden Globes that no organizer will dare set themselves up to get decimated like that again. Ricky Gervais is a British comedian who is known to push the boundaries with Didn't extremely edgy material. Politics, Downey social Jr. issues, race, religion. There is absolutely nothing Ricky won't joke about. At all, bro. It's just like, it's, 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 it's just like, you know, shit like that, bro. Oh, wait a minute. I think I seen this. Yeah, I seen this. I seen this. There's like two on the nose. He said like two on the nose. And the hold on, let me see. his career well one of the highest points um but robert has been a was that two on the nose or is that a drug motion you made yeah, wrap it up but well, look at him i mean look at this. that's what will that's what will smith should have done he just should have done something simple like that that makes the the joke come off as like eh Instead of make you know, because if Robert Downey Jr. stand up and just smacked him in the face, I mean it, that nigga's Iron Man though, so it's like, <laughs> no, it's okay. This guy, he's so handsome, so talented. He's won every award there is to win. Is that an acceptance speech in your pocket, or do you just have a very rectangular penis? Oh my God, I didn't even see this part. Oh my God. That's all Will Smith. Just stare at the nigga like, my nigga, it's not funny. Move on to the next person, bro. Oh, and, and the head tilt. Yo, oh my God. Oh shit. You know when he tilts his head like that, it's over. Look at that. Look at that. He tilts his head, then he storms out the interview. <laughs> Holy shit. If people thought that Kevin Hart's material pushed the boundaries, Ricky makes Kevin look like a comedian for children. So yeah. how he was able to host the Golden Globes five times is pretty insane. The first That's what I'm wondering. I'm like, yo, how did he get more I chances? I never thought of it like that. Bro, that would have been so much better if our DJ walked up and slapped him. Because he talking about, like, his past, like, like, you know, what? I, I mean, a hair condition, a condition is serious. But, like, he was, like, like on drugs and shit. So that's, like, kind of crazy to be trying to joke about. But, uh, you know, he just, I feel like that's how you got to do it, though. You just got to straight face it, stale face, like, okay, wrap it up, bro. <laughs> wrap it up time he hosted was in 2010 and yes he was still a savage back then as soon as he stepped on stage he started attacking steve carell you probably know me as the creator of the office <laughs> no you don't do you you think steve carell did it all oh he's brilliant isn't he steve carell <laughs> he's amazing as the bumbling office manager where does he get his ideas from <laughs> If you don't know, Ricky Gervais created a British comedy show called The Office in 2001, four years before. No, I think, I think uh, in this, I think Steve Carell was like playing, playing with him. For the American version. Ricky's show only lasted one season, but is filmed the exact same way. No music, long awkward pauses, deadpan humor, semi-realistic, but also extremely- Damn that nigga tall unrelatable chaos in the work environment. The premise of the show is the exact same and only diehard fans of the American version would argue how it's different. Ricky, like the savage he is, goes on to promote his version of the show, as well as roasting the network hosting the event. Or if you think that particular version of the show has jumped the shark a little bit, then um, watch the original, Fridays, on Adult Swim. <laughs> Or get the box set, that's still available. So uh, He brought it on the... <laughs> go and get that. Um, I will be making the most of this opportunity. I'm not used to these sort of viewing figures. <laughs> Let's face it, nor is NBC. So... He then goes on to belittle actors' value to the world. Notice how they almost clap for themselves. It is an honour to be here um, in a room full of what I consider to be the most important people on the planet. Actors. They're just... They're just better than ordinary people, aren't they? That's, no, they're, 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 we all know that. Um, imagine a world without actors. Oh, God, it doesn't bear thinking about it. Imagine if they ever went on strike. Oh, what would we do? You couldn't replace them. You couldn't replace them with any other profession, lawyers or doctors. Can you imagine a real surgeon doing what Hugh Laurie does in-house? It would be pathetic. 
he'd be all over the place. We're going, oh, where do I stand? How's my American accent? What, what's my lines? You know? Hugh Lowry did not like that joke. Another celebrity not very fond of Ricky's joke. Yo, this, the movie, we watched the trailer for it where he's like a radio host and someone calls in and is like, I have your family. Y'all know what movie I'm talking about? It just came out. Me and Danielle watched it. What the fuck? Like, all I'm gonna say is like, what the fuck? At the end of the movie, like the 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 movie is just it's just it's just weird. It's 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 weird. Oaks was Mel Gibson. Mel has struggled with alcoholism since he was 13 years old. He is also known in Hollywood to be pretty outwardly anti-Semitic. Yeah, wasn't this nigga in a tub like saying saying the hard R or something? Uh, 13. Wait, 13. Wait, is that the movie? Wait, what happened? Alcohol at 13? What the fuck? Liberty not very fond not of Ricky's joke. Dog. If I was Chris Rock, I would have walked down to Jada in the audience and licked her lollipop ass head for that slap. Yeah, and then you'll get you'll get slapped with a sexual assault charge. Oaks was Mel Gibson. Mel has struggled with alcoholism since he was 13 years old. Oh, he is shit. also known in Hollywood to be pretty outwardly anti-Semitic. In 2006, he got arrested for a DUI and then proceeded to blame Jews for all the wars around the world before threatening the police officer. So Ricky had to take a jab. I haven't offended anyone. I didn't mean it's not my fault. It's a lot of powerful people here. So if I said it's. <laughs> Honestly, I like a drink as much as the next man. <laughs> Unless the next man is Mel Gibson. Ricky's comments throughout the night felt distasteful to many around the world. Cry the numbers it. don't lie, and he drove NBC's ratings through the roof. The 67th annual Golden Globe Awards presents NBC with its biggest non-sports viewership he in the slot in he six carried. years. The Golden Globe Awards gains 12% in adults 18 to 49 and 14% in total viewers versus last year's telecast. So he was invited back again the next year. Also not nominated, I love you Philip Morris. Um, Jim, Jim Carrey and Ewan McGregor, two heterosexual actors pretending to be gay. So the complete opposite of some famous Scientologist then. Um, oh. Yo! Oh. Nah, this joke is distasteful and, and ridiculous. Yeah, nah, I'm not gonna lie. This nigga needs to be canceled. That's why nobody watched that original Office show, bro. That's why nobody watched the original Office show and Steve Carell is better and this thing is really not even funny, bro. Probably. My lawyers helped me with the wording of that joke. Ricky set the tone for the night that 2011 would be even crazier than 2010, immediately attacking we're the moving on, we're moving on. specifically The Tourist, which was a 2010 film led by Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie that was nominated for Best Motion Picture. It was a big year for 3D movies, Toy Story, Despicable Me, Tron. Seems like everything this year was three-dimensional. Except the characters in The Tourist. Um, I, I feel bad about that joke. I, no, no, I'll tell you why. I'm jumping on the bandwagon because I haven't even seen The Tourist. <laughs> Who has? Um, but no. The Tourist was notoriously this was, no, this was funny. This terrible funny. movie and many wondered why it was nominated in the first place. Well, if you- Angelina Jolie? Uh, come on. Understand how Golden Globes are chosen, TCB it might make a- hunting booty. He the real booty bandit. He out here as the real P diddler. Don't I, I need to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah, it's propaganda. Bit more sense. The Hollywood Foreign Press is a voting body of about 90 journalists that Who determine- Who is this lame nigga? Neutral right. face. Exactly. Who gets nominated and wins the trophy? To get into the HFPA, you must write for a foreign publication but live in Los Angeles. It's no secret that members of the HFPA like to use their status to mingle with celebrities. It's like if I had a real vote on who wins a Grammy and I started hitting up rappers to have dinner with me. They might entertain it because theoretically I could help them win an award. Mm. So you will notice Ricky often says the Hollywood foreign press is corrupt. It must be good because it's nominated. So shut up, okay? <laughs> and I'd like to- I'm not surprised by that though. Quash this ridiculous rumor going around that the only reason the tourist was nominated was so the Hollywood foreign press could hang out with Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie. That is, that is rubbish. That is not the only reason. They also accepted bribes. <laughs> Let's- Ricky also had to take more shots at Mel Gibson. Our first presenter is beautiful, talented, 
and Jewish, apparently. <laughs> Mel Gibson told me that. He's obsessed. And of course, he had to dig into Steve Carell some more. He was a jobbing actor, career not going that well, if I'm being totally honest, who, who got his big break when I cast him in a remake of a show that I created called The Office. He's now leaving that show and killing a cash cow for both of us. Please welcome the wonderful Tina Fey and the ungrateful Steve Carell. <laughs> it's important to know that Ricky doesn't actually have hard feelings for Steve. They are both in on the joke and love to play up the bit. It's funny, he always makes fun of me, always. Um, and he, he's, he's also, you know, per, in a personal way, been very, very sweet to me. Like, before one of these award shows, he pulled me aside and said, hey, I've got a few things that I wanted to go after you with. Is that okay? And I'm like, of course. So he's, there is a side, there is a, a gentler side to him that people don't necessarily so see. He's such a lovely man, though. But he uh, thinks you're sweet because, just to clarify, you go up to him before an award ceremony and say, I'm going to call you a prick in a minute, just well, to no, warn you. But if, uh, yeah. I told him what I was going to say. You know, if I had access to them, I'd warn everyone. Some people just don't like the idea of a person being the butt of someone's joke. So they definitely wouldn't like this stray that Sandra Bullock caught at the end of the night. The next presenter is a national treasure, Miss Congeniality herself. I love that movie. This down-to-earth girl next door first stole our hearts as a bus driver and then as a railway fare collector. Now, of course, she wouldn't be seen dead on public transport because as she just said to me backstage, poor people are gross and they smell bad. Please welcome Sandra Bullock. Surely, after these attacks, he wouldn't be brought back to host the 2012 oh Awards. God. After all, the Hollywood Foreign <laughs> Press did not want him back, with one member stating, My worry was that he was insulting, and when I invite someone to my house, they don't insult me. But this is show business. I guess I'm old-fashioned. But NBC was strongly in favor of Gervais that? returning because the ratings were just as good as they were last year, with 17 million live viewers for the entire show. So they decided to bring him back for a third year, and he was as unhinged as ever opening with lines that proved he could care less about this special evening. Tonight, you get Britain's biggest comedian hosting the world's second biggest award show on America's third biggest network. <laughs> Sorry, is it? It's fourth. It's fourth. For any of you who don't know, the Golden Globes are just like the Oscars, but without all that esteem. The first presenter he brought up was Johnny Depp, and he called back to his previous joke last year about his movie, The Tourist. Have you... Ready? I, I guess so. Have you seen The Tourist yet? <laughs> Have you? Uh... Uh, no. <laughs> The lead actor of a movie that was nominated for a Golden Globe admitting that he At didn't least he kept even it real, watch his bro. own movie the following year says just about everything you need to know about the value of these awards. Celebrities, like Elton John, have had enough of Ricky's nonsense. Even Ricky wrote on his blog after the event, I've told my agent to never let me be persuaded to do it again. But then 2016 came around and Gervais was made an <laughs> offer he couldn't refuse. Ooh. He tweeted, I'm making a list, I'm checking it twice, gonna find out who's Naughty and you nice. know how many people are probably Hashtag stared? Golden Globes. Stared Ricky when they saw genuinely that. believed he would never be back, so he made the 2016 Golden Globes his most diabolical performance ever. Shush. Shut up. You disgusting, pill popping, sexual deviant scum. I want to do this monologue and then go into hiding. Ricky kept reassuring everyone in the crowd he would be nice this evening. He was lying. <laughs> I am going to be nice tonight, and I'll tell you why. The president of the Hollywood Foreign Press just told me that if I say anything offensive or crass or resort to innuendo, he is going to come out here and personally pull me off. So that's an offer I couldn't refuse. <laughs> yes, yes, that is the level. An old man pulling me off. And then again insinuated that this award show is corrupt. One Hollywood publication said that me hosting would mean that some film stars would stay away for fear of being made fun of. As if film stars would stay away from the chance of winning a Golden Globe. Particularly if their film company has already paid for it. Everyone is clapping and laughing because they know it's true. Ricky continued to just minimize and bash the award show every which way he could. All female remakes are the big thing. There's a female remake of Ghostbusters. 
There's going to be a female remake of Ocean's Eleven. And this is brilliant for the studios, because they get guaranteed box office results, and they don't have to spend too much money on the cast. So... <laughs> Shut up, I don't care. <laughs> If you do win tonight, remember that no one cares about that award as much as you do, okay? <laughs> Don't get emotional, it's embarrassing, okay? <laughs> that award is, no offence, worthless. <laughs> it's a bit of metal that some nice old confused journalists wanted to give you in person so they could meet you and have a selfie with you. Honestly, there is nothing more I can say oh to add to this. God. Eva Longoria and America Ferreira aren't just beautiful, talented actresses. They're also two people who your future president, Donald Trump, can't wait to deport. But I'm sure you can tell the energy of this show feels different than previous years. The first three shows he hosted, he was more playful, often chuckling to himself devilishly. But this show, he seems more fed up and actually just trying to be blunt. Oh. I think he's actually trying to see, like, how far he can go and really make them not invite him back. <laughs> this show is way too long, isn't it? It's way too... This could be half an hour. Okay. Let's get through it. Right. Unbelievable. Some people still think this award means something. The winners, just listen to me. Listen, it doesn't just... Right. When Brad and Angelina see our next two adorable little presenters, they're going to want to adopt them. Please welcome Kevin Hart and Ken Jeong. <laughs> And for some reason, the producers decided it would be a good idea for Ricky to introduce Mel Gibson, who he had previously attacked multiple times, and this time would be no different. Listen, I'm sure it's embarrassing for both of us, okay? And I blame NBC for this terrible situation. Mel blames, we know who Mel blames. <laughs> Mel's forgotten all about it, apparently. That's what drinking does. No. I want to say something nice about Mal before he comes out. Um, so, oh yeah, okay, here you go. I'd rather have a drink with him in his hotel room tonight than with Bill Cosby. <laughs> Please Malcolm, Mal Gibson. Oh, God. The night concludes, celebrities are angry, the Hollywood foreign press is angry, Mel Gibson is angry, Ricky Gervais is never coming back. Until 2020, where they asked him to host for the fifth time. <laughs> what? People were shocked. Oh Ricky was shocked. And if we thought his 2016 show was direct and less playful, 2020 felt like he did not tell one joke, but oh. rather just statements of how much he hates Hollywood. Oh You'll be pleased to know this is the last time I'm hosting these awards, so I don't care anymore. Um, I'm joking. I never did. Um, NBC clearly don't care either. Fifth time. So, I mean, Kevin Hart was fired from the Oscars because of some offensive tweets. Hello. <laughs> Lucky for me, the Hollywood foreign press can barely speak English. He immediately set the stage that he would go out with a bang, and timbers were shivered. People from every background, but they all have one thing in common. They're all terrified of Ronan Farrow. He's coming for you. He's coming for you. Look, talking of all you perverts, it was a big year. It was a big year for paedophile movies. Um, surviving R. Kelly, Leaving Neverland, Two Popes. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. I don't care. I don't care. Ronan Farrow is the son of Woody Allen, who became a journalist and led the charge in exposing Harvey Weinstein for his decades of sex crimes inside the film industry. Spoiler alert, um, season two is on the way, so in the end, he obviously didn't kill himself. Just like Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> Shut up. I know he's your friend, but I don't care. <laughs> you had to make your own way here in your own plane, didn't you? Right. Tom Hanks didn't like that one. 
Many talented people of colour were snubbed in major categories. Um, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about that. The Hollywood foreign press are all very, very racist. <laughs> so It baffles me how most of Ricky's harshest roasts since 2010 were towards the organisers of the event, and oh. they still hired him five oh times. But the ending of his monologue was not a joke. So, if you do win an award tonight, don't use it as a, a platform to make a political speech, right? You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about the real world. Most of you spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. So, if you win, right, come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your god, and f off, okay? His wit and his charm we saw in previous years Jeez. was no longer present. He had used it all up. Our next presenter starred in Netflix's Bird Box. A movie where people survive by acting like they don't see a thing. Sort of like working for Harvey Weinstein. You did it. You, I didn't. You did it. Shut or Dan Snyder. Fans absolutely loved Ricky's direct attacks on the privileged class. These harsh jokes are likely the most adversity they had to face all year. Classically, journalists hated his performance. Rolling Stone said, The host's shtick at the 2020 Golden Globes felt incredibly stale. Salon said, Why the Golden Globes and host Ricky Gervais felt particularly pointless. Variety said, But most of the time, his stand-up seemed lazy. Which is true. It was kind of lazy because it didn't seem like he was joking. He wasn't. But he wasn't trying. He was literally just speaking. Like he was just talking, bro. He was spitting facts. Hey, if these celebrities are gonna congratulate themselves over a dozen times per year with superficial awards and trophies, then they need a comedian to humble them. But I think we can all agree that the real winners of these events are the fans, who get to laugh and reminisce on the comedic chaos that ensued at the expense of multi-millionaires. Oh man, bruh, that was. Yo, I I remember I I would binge the uh, those those Ricky videos, bro. I would literally binge those like every now and then. I'd bring up bring them back up and just marathon them. Yo, Patrick, this video, this was like one of my favorite videos you've made like so far, bro. This is one of my favorite videos you made this year, bro. This was this was a good video. I like I could not stop smiling. Like my goddamn my goddamn face is just like ah. Holy shit, man. GG.